Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I'm doing a video on New Year's resolutions. Now, I have cut out my end goals and my rules for my no-buy. I will link all the videos in this series. <laughs> I apologize in advance for all the weird sounds you're going to hear in the background. Our cats actually found their Christmas present early, which was a bunch of like little yarn balls, and so <laughs> they're going to be playing with those in the background. So I. I cut these out and I have these here because I want to keep both of these in mind. My ultimate end goal, one purchase a year that's thoughtful and reflective, and then all the rules. So no new supplies, no gifts, no borrowing or trading, no replacing, no extra charities, no entering, and less social media. So let's get into my New Year's resolutions and how these are going to support my no buy. Well, some of them, anyway. So, my first resolution for 2022, and resolutions are kind of an interesting thing. I would say that maybe for those of you not interested in resolutions or find the January 1st date very arbitrary and maybe meaningless to you, Start your year when you want to. When you feel motivated and you feel refreshed and you feel anew, then begin your year. So my first rule is going to be to follow the rules of my no buy. The no buy is meaningless unless I can stick to <laughs> these guidelines. <laughs> and I have to, as part of the rules, I have to hold myself accountable. I have to document my no buy. So I can't suddenly drop off and not make any more no buy videos. I have to still do those in 2022. That is part of my accountability. That is something I have to do. So the second one is, um, I'm gonna put think creatively but it's more of if I run out of something or I can't buy something then I need to figure out how to make that or yeah so I don't have gesso I realized my gesso has gone bad it smells sour I had to throw it out I found a recipe online using kitchen supplies that we already have nothing that I'm buying extra of and I will probably be making my own gesso. Should I run out of sketchbooks? I have to figure out, I won't, but maybe watercolor sketchbooks or something. I have a book binding kit, I have thread, I would have to make my own. So I have to seek more creative alternatives for this no buy. My other goal, I wanna fill 10 sketchbooks. I want to continue to do artists, creator challenges every single month, and I want to fill 10 sketchbooks. If I only fill eight, but create every day, I will still consider this a success. So 10 is the idea. Some of my sketchbooks are much larger than others, so we'll see about that one. Um, I also want to include that I want four of my challenges to painting. So four months out of 2020 to 2022, I want to do painting challenges. That's very specific to me. Now some of this may be general and some of this may be super specific. And some of these are short term, like thinking creatively for gesso. And some of these are long term. This is going to take an entire year to complete this. Um, let's see, what else do I have? So in general, a general thing I want to do, no impulse buying in general. So I can add things to a virtual cart that are over, say, I don't know, $50. We'll just put an arbitrary price there. That seems like a pretty good one. And then I wait 48 hours. Is this an impulse purchase? Is this something I need or something I want? Because in my rules, I can't replace buying with other buying. So I have to make sure that I'm sticking to the rules of my no buy and I can't suddenly take up a new book buying habit or house plants or something like that. So 
Number five would be more art news. I don't know about you, but some of the news isn't my favorite. And I would just like to maybe read more art news articles because it is fascinating. They are discovering paintings. They are giving artworks back when they find out where they originally belong to. Paintings are still being stolen. There's a bunch of really interesting news that isn't so divisive. And I would like to incorporate more of that into my daily life. This one is something a bit more specific to me. And I would like to do more family photography. So in 2020, we didn't really go anywhere and I kind of dropped off taking photos every month. And even though the days are long and the years are short, I'm not taking as many photos as I would like of my kids growing up. So this is something I want to work on every month and I will have short term lists and then a long term goal built into this one. So this one's kind of a two parter. Um, my next one would be, ha, huh, so less time online. I think less time online and less boredom scrolling on platforms like Instagram and stuff will help with my rules of the no buy. I think it will help reduce temptation. I think it'll help me be more present in the moment with my family and spend more quality time with them within the quantity we spend together. So I think this is, this is one that won't reflect on anything you see on my YouTube or my Instagram or anything, but on my end, I will notice a change and hopefully my family will too. So the last one is uh, another one that I really enjoy. And this was one I did this year and it's read 50 books. Now in 2020, I did not meet this goal. There was one year I read over a hundred. I think this year I'm coming pretty close to hitting 60. But the one extra <clears throat> of this one, <clears throat> excuse me, is I want to read 12, at least one a month that's art or design related. And this could be learning a new skill. It could be learning about a new artist, a biography. It could be looking at some famous artist's sketchbook. It could just be exploring anything. Just looking at color dynamics, looking at extra watercolor tips and tricks. It really could just be anything that's art design related. And having one of these included in my month of reading is a great add to my motivation and my inspiration. And this one is going to be 100% through the library because I can't replace buying with other buying. I can't buy any books. I can recommend books for our library to pick up, but if they don't, then I'm sort of subject to what they have in person and online as an ebook audiobook, something maybe somebody's uploaded on YouTube. But that's my goal, to read, to further my knowledge, and then, you know, maybe add audiobooks to that while I'm creating, to learn and explore and just have a great time. I don't have to be online at all times while I create. I can listen to really cool, funny things. And I really, personally, I really enjoy murder mysteries. Um, fiction. <laughs> But these are my resolutions. Most of these I think will enforce my end goal and my rules and make sure that I have included everything I have. I don't think I'll be adding any more. I think this is a lot. And again, for some of these that seem overwhelming, I just chunk these. Like this is one book a, a week. That's how I look at this. There's 52 weeks in a year that gives me a couple weeks to be sick, <laughs> be unmotivated, to maybe put down a book that I started and I got halfway and I just didn't enjoy it. That happens. Sometimes I don't finish books. Sometimes there's a book that is recommended to me and I don't end up enjoying it. So some of these I will break down into smaller parts so they're more manageable and less overwhelming. I hope this video helped. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.